Heads up, it's time for another video about taking plastic bottles like this and turning it into filament like this so I can make cool stuff like this ESP32 based Wi-Fi camera or even this awesome 3D printed marble machine. In my last video, I was discussing general principles of the Pultruder machines and telling you that there was at least two different types of machines, those made from the guts of a 3D printer and then those made from the more readily available electronic components. And I said that in that video, that in this video, that I'd be showing you the Pultruder that I made a couple years ago. And this is one that I made from the guts of a 3D printer, or more specifically, a Ramps version 1.4 kit that I bought on Amazon. And I'll leave the um, link to that in the description below. So let me show you what I put together and show you how it's similar to other Pultruders and what the differences are. I do want to preface this by saying that the type of Pultruder machine that I built is not the easiest one to make. And you should really consider those that I mentioned in the previous video. Now having said that, this is the kit that I got on Amazon. It's still out there. It comes with the motherboard, the main board, which is driven by an Arduino, Arduino Mega. It comes with the stepper drivers and it comes with much of the cabling. So this is really the controls for mine. I believe you can still find these on Amazon. They're $32, $33. And from that, I had to then 3D print and source all of the rest of the parts for my Pultruder. Now this is my Pultruder machine. I designed it myself. Um, within here is the guts of the 3D printer, the RAMS board we talked about. Some of these parts you see here, I sourced off of places like Printables or Thingiverse such as this take up gear and other parts I designed myself in Tinkercad. This is the power supply. In this case, it's 12 volt, 12 and a half amp. That supplies all the power I need for the hot end and for the take up gear. On top of this, to keep it cool, I've added a buck converter and this PC case fan. This is the case for the 3D printer motherboard, the RAMS version 1.4, and on top of that sits an Arduino Mega. Um, it's got an old copy of Marlin on it, I think version 1.1. And on the side of this, as with any 3D printer, there's a space there for an SD card. And on that SD card are all of my G-code files that I use to run the Pultruder. And this is the take-up spooler, the gear reduction system. I believe I found this on Cults 3D. Back down here, I have my spool with my ribbon on it. This was just a sample spool that I think I found on Thingiverse. Works great for my ribbon, it's about the right size. This spool holder I designed on Tinkercad. I have a little bit of a wiper here that the um, ribbon goes through to get any dust off of it. And then I have this, which is going to keep the ribbon flat. And you'll see about that in a minute and why that's necessary. After the ribbon comes through this straightener, I have it going into my hot end setup here. Now this part I made to try to keep the heat in. And note that I've removed the heat sink that would normally be above this in a 3D printer. We don't want that heat sink. We want to try to keep this as hot as we can. But there's the real business end of it. And I'm going to come back to this in a minute. Beyond the heat block and the nozzle, I put together this fan. And this is also driven off of the parts cooling fan um, system of our 3D printer motherboard that's in here. This part here is my filament sensor. I designed all of this in Tinkercad and it uses an optical sensor here. Here's our gear reduction system again, our take-up spooler. And you'll note that I have a piece of twine attached to here. And we'll use the end of this twine to tie to our ribbon. Now back to the business end of our Pultruder. This hot end and nozzle. Now, as in any 3D printer, we have our aluminum heat block here. There's, of course, the heater core, which are these heavy red wires here. There's also a thermistor in here. That's the smaller wires up here. 
and the 3D printer controls up there, the ramps board will of course then allow me to set this heat block to whatever temperature I set when I'm running the, the G code. Now in order to get the filament or the ribbon in here smoothly and flat, I generally tend to have my ribbon coming in from the side so that it hugs up against the side as it goes in. And note that I've tapered this in. And for that, I use these types of countersink bits. You'll find these available for woodworking. But we want this to be more or less a funnel going into this heat block. So as the ribbon comes in, it's gonna run up against the side of this and it's gonna fold over like a C shape and come out as a tube out of the nozzle. The nozzle itself here has also been specially prepared. I've used some drill bits that I got on Amazon, 1.7 millimeters, and drilled this out. And in order to get closer to 1.75 millimeters, you can wobble that bit just a little bit when you're drilling it. And I also had to taper the back of this to be part of that same funnel that I made in the heat block. So here's that nozzle. And you can see a little bit better here where that has been drilled out to be larger than normal. This started off being a standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle for a 3D printer. And I drilled that out with the drill bits from Amazon, the 1.7 millimeter. And then the back of it, I also tapered can sort of see the taper there. Again, using the countersink bits, I was able to get that in there and ream that out. So once this is put in, it's a nice funnel that goes from the back of the heat block out and through that hole at the front of the nozzle. Now, speaking of the heat block, it should be noted here that when you're mounting this, you really need to make sure you've got some heavy screws and such in here because when there's a lot of tension pulling on this, you want to make sure that these don't rip out of whatever you have below it. Regardless of which type of system you build, ones that use the guts from a 3D printer or ones that use the electronic components, you will have to do PID tuning on your hot end here so that whatever system you're using can keep the, the temperature at a steady temp. Now in my case, I run my PET through here at about 210 degrees Celsius, but depending upon the bottles that you're running through it um, and the particular type of plastic they are, you may need to increase or decrease that. So here's a quick run through of the control here. And again, this is that Rams version 1.4 board with the Arduino Mega on top of it. Marlin running on it, and many of you may recognize this screen. And by pressing this button here, I can go through the different parts of the menu. And this is where I run my protrusion from. I go to the print from SD, and I can pick different profiles here. For instance, this one here would run at 205 degrees Celsius and at a speed of 65 or I can start off on 210 degrees. Now, once the G-code is running and I have the machine running, I can, of course, tune this and increase or decrease the temperature, and I can increase or decrease the speed. So, there you have it. As I promised, kind of a quick run through of the poltruder that I have here, the one that I built. And I encourage you guys to all go out and look at the various systems that are available out there kits that are available, the different styles, and build one uniquely suited to you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I really hope that it's given you some inspiration to go and build your own poltruder. Do a little research, figure out what you like and don't like, or would know what questions to ask. So in the next video, I've got a bunch of prepared ribbon ready to be poltruded. So I'll line some of that up, and I'll walk you through how I start my machine how I get the ribbon started in the hot end and begin the process of pulling it through. Until then, drop me some comments, show me some love, give me some likes, and take it easy.